Today's video is all about required practical nine. We're going to be measuring the rate of respiration in yeast, a microorganism responsible for brewing beer, producing bread, and even in the production of pizza dough. So stay tuned because I'm gonna show you how to get the marks in the AQA A-Level Biology exams. Okay guys, so today we're talking about AQA A-Level Biology required practical nine. This is going to be an investigation into the effect of temperature on respiration in yeast. As always, like, comment and subscribe if this video provides you value. So some background science, first of all. Yeast is a single-celled fungus used in brewing beer, making pizza dough and baking bread. Now it respires both aerobically and anaerobically. So during aerobic respiration, we'll have glycolysis, the link reaction, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain, AKA oxidative phosphorylation. Now anaerobic respiration will lead to the production of ethanol and carbon dioxide, which is fantastic for brewing beer because the ethanol will form the alcohol and the CO2 will form bubbles that you'll have in your pint of beer. Now when respiring aerobically, the electron transport chain is used to produce ATP. In this investigation, electrons from the electron transport chain in the yeast cells will be taken up by methylene blue. And methylene blue is a substance that changes color when reduced. Remember, reduction is gain of protons or electrons. Now we can use methylene blue to show if aerobic respiration is taking place. And if it is, the methylene blue will simply decolorize. So it's a great qualitative reaction. Now, this is some data from my students that have done a really successful investigation into this this week. So we've got the temperatures on the left hand side, which were the independent variable that they were changing. And then on the right hand side, we've got the dependent variable that's being measured. And you can see here, the thing that's being measured is the time taken for methylene blue to completely decolorize. And from the results, we've got a mean that shows us shorter time is needed in order to decolorize methylene blue as the temperature increases. So you can draw your own conclusions about this in terms of thinking about kinetic energy and the movement of molecules and all that good stuff. So on the left, I've included an equipment list for you that you would need for required practical nine. Now let's run through a method. So step one is to set up a water bath at 35 degrees. When I did it with my students, I had a couple of large water baths that were thermostatically controlled and a kettle. And what we had was a 35 degree water bath and a 45 degree water bath. And then we used some boiling water from the kettle and cold water from the tap to achieve the other temperatures. And we did that just by sticking a thermometer in it. Now, next you label five test tubes, one to five, mix the yeast and glucose thoroughly so that the yeast has substrate to carry out respiration. Add two centimeters cubed of methylene blue to test tube one. Next, shake it for 10 seconds and put it back into the water bath. After you've done this, do not shake it again because we don't want to mix oxygen back in with the solution because that will cause DC pip to turn back to blue because the oxygen will steal the electrons. Next, you need to start a stop clock and time how long it takes for the blue color to disappear and write it down in your table. And then finally, repeat this for each different test tubes with the four other tubes you've set up. Now this is some more example data here. So for example, at 20 degrees, it might've taken 270 seconds, 35, 125, at 45, it may have taken 145 seconds, but you can do this experiment to, to find out your own data. I shared my classes earlier. So how can this come up in the exam? This would be a great opportunity for you to pause this video here and have a go at these questions. So we've got yeast and glucose within a conical flask, and then we have a, a chemical that absorbs oxygen separate from the yeast and glucose. We have a delivery tube and bung coming off the top of the conical flask, making it airtight. And we have food coloring with a scale to measure how far the 
the droplet of food colouring has moved. Now, number one, suggest why the yeast was left for an hour after the yeast had reached a constant temperature. Number two, explain why during the investigation, the food colouring moved towards the right. And number three, we've got a nice maths question here. The food colouring moved 1.5 centimetres in 24 hours. The diameter of the lumen, which is the hole in the middle of the tube, is one millimetre. Delivery tube volume equals pi r squared length times length. Pi, in this case, we're going to use 3.14 and L equals length. Calculate the volume of gas produced in centimetres cubed per hour. So let's go through the answers to these AQA exam paper questions. Number one, suggest why the yeast was left for an hour after the yeast had reached a constant temperature in the apparatus. So you would have had to say that all of the oxygen was absorbed by the chemical here, or it was used up by the yeast in aerobic respiration. Now question two, explain why during the investigation, the food colouring moved towards the right. So let's have a look at the diagram. So this droplet of food colouring moved towards the right. So obviously the pressure and volume of gas in this system has increased. So the pressure increased, causing the volume to expand slightly, moving the food colouring. So your first mark is for saying that CO2 is produced during anaerobic respiration. And your second mark is for saying an increase in pressure moves the food colouring to the right. So question three, the food colouring moved 1.5 centimetres in 24 hours. Now this is a great practice question for you. It's a past paper question for AQA A-level biology and it's tricky. The maths in A-level biology is really tricky, but it's satisfying when you learn how to get it right. So let's pick out the key information first of all, which is good practice. So it moved 1.5 centimetres in 24 hours. The diameter of the lumen of the delivery tube is one millimetre. Now we're given the equation for delivery tube volume, which is pi r squared times length. And we're given that we can use pi is 3.14, so simplifying it there, and L equals length. Calculate the volume of gas produced in centimetres cubed per hour. Well, we're giving it per 24 hours, so you can pretty much guarantee we're going to have to divide by 24 to get it per hour. Now, we're also giving the lumen of the delivery tube as millimetres, and we've got to convert that to centimetres. So we're picking out the relevant information here. Now, what we're going to do is plug our numbers into our equation. So we've got pi, which is 3.14. Okay, so we're using pi because that's the first part of our equation. So 3.14 times 0 0.05 squared. Well, where have I got 0 0.05 squared from? Well, remember it's pi r squared. So r is the radius and we're given the diameter here of one millimeter. Well, one millimeter is 0 0.1 centimeters. So the diameter in centimeters is 0 0.1, but we want the radius. So it's 0 0.05, which is half of 0 0.1. So pi 3.14 times the radius 0 0.05 centimetres squared. And then we're going to times that by 0 0.0625. Well, where have I got the 0 0.0625 from? What I've simply done is divided 1.524 to give us the movement per hour in centimetres. Because we're given the movement in 24 hours, the question wants us to give the movement in one hour. Okay, so we divide it by 24. Now, your answer should have come out as 0 0.00049, or to put that into standard form, it's 4.9 times 10 to the minus 4. And if you're not an A level mathematician, that's fine. The simple way to put something into standard form is to just put a decimal point in. Okay, for the number you're going to do. So we do 4.9 and then it's times 10 to the minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. Okay, so we'd have to move the decimal place four points. So that's where we get the minus 4. 
So that's everything for today, guys. I hope you learned something today. Please like, comment and subscribe if you did. And let me know in the comments what you want to see next. I will see you in the next one.